There are only three real contenders. At least that's a statement that I read a couple days ago, and it's just been in my mind since then, so I think it's time for us to make a video. So it comes from John Hollinger at The Athletic, and he opens up the article saying, so how many teams would you say are real, true, honest to goodness contenders right now? And before we dive more into this article, I think it's important for us to define what a contender really is. Of course, I've been having these conversations with the homies all the time since we have an NBA podcast, and it seems like my definition of a true contender is different than consensus. In my eyes, a true contender is a team that can go into any series, no matter the circumstances, and win. Seems pretty simple. But but it's a little bit different because there are some teams out there that I think could win a championship, but there's a lot of exterior factors like injury luck, like breaking right in a bracket. So we go against this team and not that team. And for me, a true contender, it, it, they don't care about that. They shouldn't care about that because we believe no matter who we go against, we are the better team, whether they're healthy or whether we're the higher seed or whatever. Again, that's just my definition. You might disagree and that's completely okay. But how can we say right now that there's only three teams, three teams that fit the criteria of a contender. I mean, we got teams making big time trades. We got teams going on the buyout market and picking up extra, extra bodies. We have so many teams that believe that they have a chance this year. I mean, a perfect example of this is just looking at the Western Conference. A lot of these teams believe that they have a chance. You can argue that out of the 10 teams right now in the Western Conference, Eight of them believe that they have a chance to win a championship. And the two I'm discounting are the Minnesota Timberwolves and the New Orleans Pelicans, considering we don't know what's going on with Zion and we ain't got no updates on Carthony Towns. But every single other one of these teams either made trades or did something to make them believe that we have a chance. The Kings are just really, really good. I mean, how can they not believe that they have a chance if they've been dominating teams across the league this season? I know a lot of things are going on in Memphis, uh, but John Moran said a couple months ago, he's good out West. The Suns just traded for Kevin Durant. The Clippers have Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, and they became buyers this deadline. The Warriors are the defending champions. The Mavericks were just in the conference finals and made a trade to add Kyrie Irving. And then the Lakers are the Lakers. And they believe that, hey, if we can get in there and Braun's coming back and AD's playing great, we can beat any team. But then we go back to our original statement. There's only three real contenders. So a lot of people are about to be really upset if that's true. But what is the rationalization behind this? Let's go back into the article. The past 26 champions and 45 out of 46. Think about that. 45 out of 46 champions post the merging era had a top three record in their conference. That is a ridiculous stat. 26 straight years of this being the case, of being a top three team in their conference. 45 out of 46. So do we believe that this year is different than the last 26? Do we think that this is gonna be the second year in the last 47 that this recipe doesn't, doesn't happen? Of the last 43 champions, 42 have won at least 52 games. But he does let you know that like last year, the Warriors won uh, exactly 53, which is one more than the criteria. And then the Bucks won 53 if you change it because of the loss of games. So just one game above the 52, but still some pretty staggering numbers. And the only teams that fit this criteria right now are the Milwaukee Bucks, the Boston Celtics, and the Denver Nuggets. And if we want to go super crazy into the numbers, there's only two teams in the last 21 seasons that won a championship without being top 10 in offense and top 10 in defense. First team was the uh, Detroit Pistons from, from the past. We all know they were a crazy defensive team, but the offense wasn't quite there. It went like it was trash, but it won top 10. And the other team that didn't fit the criteria of top 10 offense, top 10 defense, the year they won a championship is last year Golden State Warriors. They were 17th in offense by the end of the season and second on defense. But even they, both of those teams, the Detroit Pistons and the Golden State Warriors, fit into John Hollinger's thing. They top three in their conference. And both teams won over 52 games. So if we use my recipe as top 10 offense, top 10 defense, and also use the recipe that John Hollinger's talking about, what team? is the, the, the NBA champion right now. The only team that fits the criteria exactly is the Boston Celtics. I hate to break it to you, ladies and gentlemen. This might be our eventual NBA champions. Obviously, the reason we watch the sport is because it's not that simple. It's not just numbers and stuff like that. But it, it's pretty damning to see that all of these are, are going that way. But if you look at top 10 offense, top 10 defense, the Philadelphia 76ers are fifth in offense and ninth in defense. The Cleveland Cavaliers are ninth on offense and third on defense. And the Memphis Grizzlies are 10th on offense and second on defense. Those are all the teams that fit the top 10, top 10 criteria, but some of them won't hit the 50 plus games thing. This is this is why I disagree with what John Hollinger is saying in this article. Because as of right now, the Philadelphia 76ers are projected to win 51 games. That's just one off of the Hollinger method. 
They're already top 10 in offense and top 10 in defense. So you're trying to tell me the difference between them being a contender and not a contender is one random regular season game that they lost. It might have been one that Joel and B set out. It might have been one that somebody was injured. It can't just be formula this and formula that. Then the biggest elephant in the room is Kevin Durant. Um, unfortunate that he, that he got injured. Just so many freak accidents after free ac freak accidents. Hurting yourself in warm-ups is ridiculous. But he will be back come playoff time, before playoff time. And Kevin Durant is not a normal human being. Every single time this man, Kevin, has gone through an injury, whether it be a two-week injury, a year-long injury, a six-month injury, he always comes back and just look cool. You know how we be thinking about, all oh, the jail and period slash, uh, the, the re-getting getting acclimated to basketball? Kevin Durant don't do that. His first game back <laughs> with the Suns, he looked like the Kevin Durant that he had been the entire season. So there's so many different factors where I have to ultimately disagree that there are only three real contenders. They might be the three favorites, but there, there are some other teams out there that I think for sure could go into any playoff series and win regardless of the circumstance. And like, do we give the Warriors the benefit of the doubt? Oh, this must have happened today. The Pistons, the Rockets, and the Spurs have it. Uh, they're done. They're out. I don't, I don't remember seeing that like yesterday. Um, but the thing with the Warriors, obviously, is this. Uh, they are tied for the third worst role, role team in all of basketball. Tied with the three teams. I'm sorry, one game away from being tied with the teams that aren't in the running for the playoffs anymore with 17 games left. But but the one thing is, during the Steph curry Clay Thompson era, they've always won at least one road game in, in the playoffs. That, that's the stat in, like, every series. But this year, it's just, it's just bad. Even if you look at yesterday against the Memphis Grizzlies, all the animosity between Draymond Green and Dylan Brooks who taking shots at each other, whether it be in interviews or podcasting, they they got destroyed. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, they, they relatively healthy without wigs. Going against a team that's missing Stephen Adams for pretty much the rest of the regular season. Brandon Clark is out for, for the season and plus some get well soon. And then Jaws dealing with what he's dealing with. Y'all lost on the road again. They just can't win a road game. So you want to give them the benefit of the doubt? But like, how? When they, they're the, one of the best teams at home, but they can't put together a role win to save their life. I wonder how many of the years that we're talking about have had this level of parity. How many years of the 40 whatever we're talking about have had this level of parity? Like, it has to happen. Again, it's a big sample size. It's 40 plus years of basketball. But how many years have had the parity enough where the difference between being the five seed and being on the outside? Of, we, we're not even just talking, you know, the play-in is something that is new. But like completely on the outside looking in, the 11th seed, the difference between that is two games. Again, it's had to have happened because it's a big sample size, but I wonder how rare this actually is. Like, are we living in the anomaly season? I really do hope so. Not saying that I don't want to see the Bucks, Celtics, or Denver Nuggets win a championship because, again, my team ain't competing, so I don't care who actually win. But I think it's just better for any sport where the, the winner of the championship is up in the air more than ever. Because in my lifetime as an NBA fan, I, I mean, we went through this, this period of an eight-year, nine-year period where we knew exactly what was going to happen out east. And then once we got to the finals, we had a good idea of who was going to win and who wasn't. Because I think there are a lot of teams that can make a conference finals run. But how many of those teams do I think can win that, fi that conference finals and then win the finals against the opposing conference? Like, we see teams come out of nowhere. I'm just going to put that in quotation marks. Like the Dallas Mavericks did last season. Or the Trailblazers did a few years ago. Or the Denver Nuggets did a few years ago. I can't, again, out of nowhere is in quotation marks because those are good basketball teams. But, like, a lot of the times we see that surprise team get to the conference finals and then they go against a team that a lot of people believe is the favorite and the favorite ends up winning. And then, boom, uh, it, it's over with and they go to the finals. Because I remember just... A week ago, um, on ESPN, the, the panel of NBA, ex, NBA experts were asked if the Lakers were the eighth seed and they're going against the Denver Nuggets in the seven-game series. Who you got? And out of the four people on that panel, they all said they all said the Lakers. Are they right? Are they wrong? I don't know. Time will tell, I guess. It's a possibility that that might happen. And they were asked the exact same thing about the Memphis Grizzlies and the Lakers, and they all picked the Lakers. Is that Laker bias? Is that Braun bias? Is whatever. I don't know. But this could be a year. At least we hope to be a year where parity is at an all-time high that a team that we see as a regular season juggernaut could get eliminated earlier on than normal. I mean, last year was that, right? Last year was that. Juggernaut in the regular season was the Phoenix Suns. And they got laughed at off their own court in the second round of the playoffs. So hopefully what happened last year with the Warriors not being top 10 and this and that can carry over and continue this, this streak of parity. 
At least that's all we can ask for as NBA fans. And if you ask me right now, March 9th, Kenny, who do you think is going to win a championship? I'm going to tell you the Milwaukee Bucks. I picked them in the preseason and I've been riding with them because they look like the most complete team, even though they do not fit the top 10 and top 10 criteria. So based on my own little methodology, I'm going against history because offensively, they are not good. They are not good. I'm sorry. They are not great. Let's put it that way. Great. They're league average. They're, they're league average offense according to the numbers. But I still believe come playoff time, you have the best player in the world and a, a soon to be healthy, complete team. It's going to be hard to beat that team at seven. Anyway, I don't even know if I said anything in this video. You let me know what you think about there being three real contenders. Is it facts to you or not?